Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. One of the requests I've been getting a lot recently has been ragdolls, so we'll be taking this Mixamo character that's designed for animation and actually make it so that when it dies or whenever you want, you can make it switch to using a ragdoll. So it's going to seem rigid using its, you know, idle kind of standing animation. And then when it dies, it's going to get blasted off into the wall or wherever you want. It's up to you. So I hope you have fun with this video. Hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. But first, I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. There's also a link to their Discord server if you'd like to be part of the Admix community. Okay, so over in Unity, what do we have? Well, we have the character, okay? Now this character, if we press Alt and click on the arrow, we can see all of its joints, okay? All of the different bones. So I'm assuming at this point you've either made your own character and you've got something set up like this in the hierarchy, or you've gone and downloaded the same thing from Mixamo, okay? And what we have is we have, as I said, all the different bones, okay? So we've got the hips, legs, and you can see uh, with the transform of the gizmo where all these different things are. And that's important because you need that for when setting up the ragdoll. Unity does most of the work for you, and then you just have to do some tweaking afterwards. So if we take this player object, okay, right click, create a new 3D ragdoll, okay? Now when you make the ragdoll, it requires you to actually specify some of the different bones, okay? Now I'm not gonna go through every single bone here, I'll show you how to, you know, find what you need, and then it's up to you just to fill in the rest. So the pelvis bone, okay? Now they don't really call anything here the pelvis, but there's a hip bone that's pretty much in the center, okay? This is where you want to do for this. So we drag that in. The left hips, okay, well we can actually just go down and we can see this is really what it means for the hips on the left, okay, it's kind of off to the side. Every, you know, model, every rig is going to be slightly different, so maybe the first time you do this it doesn't really feel right, so you can redo it again and tweak a bit. But I'm going to say left leg, then we want left knee, so if I go down in the hierarchy, that's right on the knee, okay, that's there. And left foot, I go down one more, that's right on the foot, okay. And you can probably just guess and go for the rest of these. Okay, I've dragged them all in. Now the mass is going to be you know, the mass of the person, and what it'll actually do is it'll kind of figure out based on human anatomy, I assume, you know, which uh, mass to give each of the different body parts. So the average mass of a human male or an adult male is about 70 to 80 kilograms. Let's go with 70. Okay, it doesn't really matter too much, and we don't need to change the other two settings. So as you see here, okay, I've got all my different things set up. Assuming you're using the same rig, you can see here the names of all the different uh, bones and where they are. Just pause the video if you need to do that. Then now that we're done, we can press create. And as soon as you press create, all it's gonna do is it's gonna stick on loads of components throughout your player, okay? So as you see here, I'm on the head, the head is selected. And it has now a sphere collider, a rigid body, and a character join. And you see the mass here is 4.375. That'll be a fraction of the 70 that I put in, okay? And to be honest, if we just press play now, this is gonna work. This player is just gonna fall to the floor, okay? Looks a bit odd, okay? But it falls to the floor and it kind of works. And if you actually click on the root of the player, you can see all the different colliders, like so. At this point, it's up to you to go through the different objects and tweak the colliders. They're not perfect, okay? They're gonna be pretty good, as you see. This is pretty accurate. At least the positioning and the rotations are pretty much perfect. You just need to tweak the actual sizes of the colliders. On the legs here, it's kind of a bit too big. Now you might be fine with how it is, but it's up to you, okay? So for example, I can go in the hierarchy. I can go to the legs. I can go up to here, okay? So now I'm on the right leg here, and I can tweak the collider's radius and get it to about here. Maybe that's right, maybe I want it a bit bigger, like 0.6. And maybe I'm happy with that, okay? And the whole point is you need to now go through and do that everywhere on your character until you're happy. To save some time, I've of course done this already, so I'm going to delete my player 1 and activate the hidden player 0, I guess. Okay, and I've already tweaked these things, so I've got the legs to be roughly about right, okay? Obviously the legs vary in width across the actual leg from the knee to the thigh, so you can't really get this perfect, but it's it's good enough, okay? And uh, obviously the box colliders are used for the chest, and the sphere colliders are used for the head, and then the cylinder colliders, uh, or the capsule colliders are used for the arms and the legs. You can also do some more tweaking, you can mess around with the character joints, okay? So on the character joints, this is what tells it how it can rotate when it, you know, drops to the ground when I press play. So you can tweak the actual rotation values, you know, you can clamp it so that the head doesn't snap in a weird direction and so on and so forth. Okay, this video isn't about how to set up the perfect ragdoll, you know, this is good enough if I press play now, you'll watch it fall to the floor. Um, there are some extra scripts on here, I'll get to in a minute, but the animator is disabled, so it's just going to fall like a ragdoll, fall to the ground and flop, okay? And yeah, that, that works fine. So to be honest, that is the ragdoll done. 
but in most cases you don't just want your character to spawn in as a ragdoll okay we want it to be just like a normal animated character and then when it dies it becomes a ragdoll so that's what we're going to do next let's get into it okay so for the next part we need on the player on the root an animator okay this is what's going to be used by default when the player is alive then we disable this when they die and the actual animation i'm using is i just have one simple animation okay so if i go to the animator okay i've got a standing idle animation and it's really simple if i press play you'll see it but it'll look quite odd and that's because one of the problems is i've got the animator enabled and the ragdoll so the ragdoll physics are trying to make the you know top uh, part of the body topple over because it's, it's top heavy but then obviously the animator is trying to fix that because it's trying to do animation. So it looks very odd right now. The point is an animation is playing and we'll stop it looking weird by writing some code in a minute. And as well as the animator, we have the ragdoll dev script, okay? So I'm gonna open up the ragdoll dev script and this is where we're going to write the logic for when the player dies, you know, adding some force, blasting it off and turning it into a ragdoll. So there's only one reference we need. We want reference to the animator, okay? We need to actually turn off the animator essentially when the player dies. We also want to be able to effectively turn on and off the rigid bodies and the colliders in the ragdoll, okay? Now, this approach that I'm doing might vary slightly if you have different colliders and rigid bodies on the root of the player, but in this scenario, it's just using animation and then when it dies becomes a ragdoll, so I don't need to worry about that. All I need is a rigid body array. Now, you could do this in line, you could have it so that it grabs these rigid body components, you know, at runtime. I mean, it's technically at runtime anyway, but I think it's always better to cache these things in start assuming that, you know, throughout the playtime of the game, the character doesn't gain or lose any ragdoll uh, bones or rigid bodies. So assuming that, you know, he has the same bones when he spawns as when he dies, then you can do it this way. So ragdoll bones or bodies actually, and then the collider array, okay, for the, obviously the colliders, so the ragdoll colliders. In the start method, we want to actually get these references. So get components in children, okay? Make sure it's the plural one, get components in children. We specify the type and it will return an array of that type. So this is going to get us all of the rigid bodies in all of the parts of the, the uh, player. So remember like under the player it has all the different parts and some of them have rigid bodies on. So if we go down to for example the leg, okay the leg has a rigid body, that will be added to that array as will all the other rigid bodies. And we want to do the same for all the colliders. So ragdoll colliders is get components in children collider. And now we want a method to be able to toggle the ragdoll on and off. Rather than us, you know, having to go through and turn everything off in the prefab, we could do that. It'd just take a bit of time and it's a bit annoying. It'd be nice if the code can do it for us. So we'll make a method to toggle the ragdoll, okay? So in start, we'll toggle it off. So the ragdoll is off and then we'll turn it on when the player dies. So let's take in the ball for the state and we'll have the logic in here to do that. So what we can do is we can set the animator to be enabled and that'll be the opposite of the state being a ragdoll. So obviously, if this is true for becoming a ragdoll, then the animator will be false. And if it's the other way around, if we're turning the ragdoll off, it means the animator is being turned on. So this will work here. And then we want to loop over all the rigid bodies. So for each rigid body in ragdoll bodies, what do we want to do to them? We want to change uh, whether they are is kinematic. And that basically means do they simulate, you know, normally. When you turn a rigid body into kinematic mode, it basically means it's up to you to move it in code. The, you know, gravity isn't going to bring it down or anything. Um, so this is our way of turning the rigid bodies on and off. So we want that to be opposite of the state, okay? Turning the ragdoll on is kinematic is off. And that means that uh, physics will, will affect the rigid body. Then finally, another for each loop. So let's actually just copy paste this. But instead of looping over rigid bodies, we want to loop over colliders. Okay, so let's call them collider in ragdoll colliders. And what do we want to do? We want to enable and disable the colliders. So collider.enabled equals, well, in this case, it is the state. So when we toggle the ragdoll on, we want to turn the colliders on. Then up in start, we want to toggle the ragdoll false. Okay, so we're turning the ragdoll off when we spawn. Now we can actually go test this now. We jump back over into Unity, go to the player, okay? And here's the ragdoll dev script. We want reference to an animator, okay? Let's do that and press play. So what this will do is it will actually just turn off all these colliders and rigid bodies so that the animation is being used only, okay? So this is what I tried to show you earlier, but obviously the ragdoll was kind of taking over, but now it works just fine. You know, the player doesn't look odd. They're just, just idle animation, okay? And now we want the code to effectively kill the player and make it so that they uh, do turn the animator off and turn the ragdoll on and then maybe get blasted into the wall or something. 
So let's make the method to kill the player. So we'll just call it die or something. Okay. What happens when the player dies? We want to toggle the ragdoll on. Okay. So the ragdoll is now on. And we want to add some force. Okay. So we're going to knock the player back. So let's say for each rigid body RB in ragdoll bodies. Okay. Now, normally, if you were like attacking the player and doing this, you do a sphere cast and get all the nearby rigid bodies. Because I'm just doing it inside the player, I'll just say add the force to all of the rigid bodies in the player. So we're going to say rb.add explosion force. With explosion force, you actually specify the center of where the force is being applied from and the radius so that it actually calculates, you know, the direction to send everything off in. Imagine there's, you know, an explosion blast happening at a certain position. That's what we're simulating here. Now, the actual uh, value of the force, obviously this might seem like an odd number, but I had a mess around with this earlier. 107 works pretty well, and that's because I'm going to make the character get flown and knocked onto the wall. Okay, the actual position for the you know center of the explosion is going to be a minus one, 0 0.5, minus one. That, th these values are completely just for my example. Okay, you guys can use whatever you like. Um, obviously, you'd have your explosion coming from a projectile, maybe, or you know some mine. The player runs and steps on it, blasts them off into the distance. You know whatever kind of game you're making with the ragdolls here. Um, the explosion radius. Let's just go with five. It's big enough. And the upwards modifier. So does it you know knock them up at all. I don't even know why this exists. Uh, I still don't really get it because you could just surely add that in the actual force. But anyway, um, I'll just say that as zero. Um, and then finally, the mode, which is going to say impulse. It's a, a one-off add force and it's going to be dependent on the mass. So the heavier parts of the player will not be as affected as much. And then we just need a way to call the die method. So I'm actually going to go do it up in here. On start, I'm going to invoke. I don't use this method very often, but it's good for this kind of testing here. Uh, the method name, okay, the die method. And how long do you want to wait to uh, inv evoke it? So let's just say five seconds, okay? So five seconds after start, we're going to kill the player, which will then turn it into a ragdoll and then add a force at this vector, at this position. And this position is kind of just slightly in front of the player. It's like around here. So it's going to knock the player up in this direction. So if we go back to the player, there's nothing else to do here. So let's go to game, maximize, and press play. Okay, it's playing, so in a few seconds the player should get blasted, and if I've done the maths correctly, they should land on the wall, like so. Okay, so that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed, if you did please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next, if you found the video entertaining or you found it helpful, useful, let me know down below. If you have any more questions, of course, ask those too. Thanks as always for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my Patreon. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Zumran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.